Hey guys, I hope you're all well. Right, back on the BM. I've been busy, busy, busy doing other things and catching up. Uh, it's Bank Holiday Monday, so I don't think I'll get any visitors today. So I'm gonna get a good day stuck in. I've been catching up on frames. As you can see, there's one ready to go out. Well, I've, I've got to do one more bit of grinding on that and then that's done. Uh, hopefully I'll get a visitor tomorrow to get the other one back on the bench and get the mudguard fitted to that and a couple of little brackets and that one's done. And then I am waiting for axle plates to get on with the full Enfield build which is going to happen in the background. And I may have said before I am going to try and do one frame a month just to sell because I get lots of people asking for them. Anyway, we'll see how that goes. Right, back to the BM. So, I got pretty much all the exhaust pipe finished. I got the springs on. I, I hurt my arm putting them on. How ridiculous. I was got a spring pull on. I was pulling on the spring with my sort of okay arm now. And it crunched a bit. So yeah, that didn't go down very well. But it's done. <laughs> So all I've got to do now is get some new clamps for these. One and two at the front there, three clamps. And put the uh, the old sensor in. I've got an idea for that, make it real simple. I'm going to cut it out of here, and basically bang it into the wide piece on the bottom of there. So I'll probably do that when it comes off the bike for the last time to be fair. Anyway, seat pan. The bits I've been really looking forward to. So I'm going to get the seat pan underway today. I'm going to do it in sheet, really thin sheet. Get all the shape that I need and then add a little bit of strength to it. I don't want to do fiberglass. I know people are going to say, oh, you should do it in fiberglass. I get that. I actually really don't enjoy working with that stuff. It's like when I paint anything paint goes over everything else bar what I want it on same with I've done fiberglass than before and I end up putting more fiberglass on myself than on the job and I'll get all in a mess I can't be bothered with that <laughs> so it's getting done in sheet <laughs> and yeah like I say we'll get the main shape of it done and then I'll add a bit of strength into it and what I'm going to do then is get the seat covered and then get on with the side panels. I get the seat covered, then I know exactly how the side panel is going to fit against the seat when it's covered. So, oh, yeah, let's get on with it. Right, first bit of metal. Uh, yeah, I think this is going to be done in several pieces. I'll say I'll, I'll do it in this really thin stuff. It's going to be easy to shape, and then we'll add a bit of strength at the end. Right, to start with, I'm going to do the front bit that goes around the tank. So I'm going to try and do that like on its own and basically start building it back from there. And yeah, I want to try and get it fitting everything nice as possible. Is that going to go all the way through there? It might do, we'll see. I'll start with curving it, not that I'm doing it. It's got a lump of weld on it. Oh, I'm going to have to dress that off. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> That's that dressed off. Is there any more on it? Oh, no, there's a load of gunk on it. <laughs> Whatever that is, I dread to think. Right. Get a bit of a curve on this. Is that going to go through? Come on, grip it. Uh, might have that a bit high. Let's drop that a little bit. There we go. Right. That one's a bit low, that end. Oh, just. <laughs> I know I could probably lot like, sort of curve this by putting it over me near somewhere, but I'm trying to get it nice and neat. That's better. <sighs> I 
do a few more passes and then we're going to check it against the tank and then start trimming it. Come on, get in there. Okay. That's the one. I think I'm going to have to move some stuff. curving right let's go now look at that lots more so yeah, we'll get that uh, following the shape of the tank. Obviously, it's not sort of a uniform curve. It's got flats on it. But when I've got the curve matching that top bit, then we'll start sort of bashing it around to follow the tank. And then we'll cut out, start, yeah, start trimming away at the shape it's got to be. In fact, I could probably cut a bit off that now. Yeah, I'm going to mark that actually and trim the edges off. Right, I've marked that up, take a bit off at a time. It's going to need more off, but I'll know as we get closer to the shape of the tank, we'll know exactly what to take off. Just makes it a bit more manageable as we're working on it as well. Right, a bit more curve. Right, let's have a look at that. Right, we ain't far from that uh, top curve of the tank now. Uh, so I think next I'm going to cut a curve into it again get it somewhere near and then we're going to have to start flattening the sides out a little bit because I'll say the, the tank ain't like a proper curve it's got a curve there I don't know if you can see the line in the tank, then it goes fairly flat there. Right. Yeah. Cut a curve in and then go from there. Okay, bit of card. Now if I get that cut, then send it straight off down to the edges. So it's just going to be a case of keep doing bits like this and keep trimming and doing. Trimming and shaping till I've got what I want. It's going to be a bit of messing about, but I'm sure we'll get there in the end. <laughs> And see how that looks. That's not too bad actually. 
I think uh, we'll manipulate it a bit by hand. Tell you what, that's uh, <laughs> that's working out really good this side. Obviously, on this, the, the sides are odd, it's just like a panel over here, and then it's the air intake on this side, so they are odd anyway from side to side. They're an odd bite, full stop. <laughs> Well, I think these corners have got to come off now. I think we've got to take that corner off. That's what I think I'm going to do is have the seat pan so it sort of comes to the top of the frame and then the actual side panels go over the frame. That's probably going to be the best bet. We'll see. And then also, we've got quite a big void under there. So this... Uh, will possibly be cut out. You've got to remember that you're not going to see like the inside shape of this. I think if I cut, this is only going to be rough marking. Cut that out like so, and then the seat pan goes straight down. Because obviously in this area, we want a, we want a bit, of, bit of comfort for your wedding tackle. Especially off-road. Up and down the bumps and lumps and stuff. So yeah, I think something like that and then put a flat piece in straight down. As you can see, we've got this great big void here. Could probably go further up with that actually. Yeah. Let's trim the corners off to start with. Sure, we get it right. Bend that the other way. Oh, good enough to mark it anyway. Is that right? Yeah. That's the one. That's about right. Okay, that's that trimmed off. We're getting closer each bit. And I say it's all very wobbly and flexible at the minute, but I'm going to do something at the end of it that will add the strength, like I say. I think next, let's get a bit of tape. Uh, I'm going to mark where that, about where that comes to at the top of the tank there. Then measure where the tank ends, and then we can cut this out, and then put a piece straight down, and then we can get a lot of padding in this area for obvious reasons. And then, yeah, basically just making it up, chopping and changing as we go along, till we get something we're happy with. I don't even know how I'm gonna bolt it down yet, but we'll figure that out. 
So yeah, next, measure from there to where the tank drops off, cut this, so all this bit will be gone and will be straight down. Bear in mind, the, this seat pan that we're making, the most important part about it is the outside edge because that is gonna be the shape of the seat. What happens all in the middle of it doesn't actually really matter. It can be all different shapes because it's not going to be seen. It's just the outside profile. I know probably some of you are going to say, why don't you use like, round bar to do that? Yes, that, that is a way of doing it, but uh, there's loads of ways to skin a cat, as they say. I'm just preferring to do it like this. And like I've said earlier, fiberglass, no. I've, I can't stand the stuff. Don't get me wrong, it's a brilliant way of doing it. I hate working with it. <laughs> so I'm doing it this way. And because I'm doing it out of such thin sheet, the weight won't really be an issue. What I do at the end to put the strength in it will keep it strong. Anyway, let's get this measurement done. So from here, take that off. As you can see, we haven't got a lot before we drop off into this big void. So I can then cut that down and put a straight piece down and then we'll go into the rest of the seat base okay we have got three inches uh, i'm gonna go three and a half give us a bit of wiggle room we can always trim it out which is easy and having to add back on so that mark there, we know that's the end of the tank where it just drops straight off into that void. So I'm gonna work some out here now, and then we can cut that out. I can't know what I'm gonna do yet, but I'll figure it out. Right, a bit of marking out, a bit of mind changing as you can see. <laughs> So I think I've got a line that is going to sort of work and keep us heading in the right direction. So I'm just going to cut that out, then offer it back up to the bike, and then decide how we're going to go on with the rest of the bit that goes over the shock and stuff, the top shock mount. So let's cut that out and see how we go. a thing. We'll see. Right, I'm going to move this clip. I'm pretty sure I can do without that. I'll get a screwdriver that fits that might help, mine it? Let's try that one. There we go, that one fits. I can't even remember what this was for. It's probably that wiring harness. But that's going to be vastly reduced the way we're going to do it, so I'm pretty sure we can do away without this. There we go, gone. Right, let's see what we've got then. Okay, so now we basically want to send a bit more or less straight down. Uh, I think basically we're going to have to construct that out of several pieces. Send a strip down, then build these sides into it, going round the air box, and have that up 
iron ore so we then go round that top shop mount I think yeah let's see how it goes right next bit so we've got to cut a bit 107 mil wide Hundred and twenty long. So we we'll have to piece this up, but doing doing this piecing this up will also start automatically adding strength to it as well. One twenty there. Doesn't look big enough that bit, but it is. It should. Well, I'm hoping it is. So this will be the start of the piece straight down to the top of the air box there. So I'll cut that first. And then I'll have to curve the top to match that. I'll probably tack it on and then grind it off. We'll see. in there like so and then we'll put sides in and this is where I might have to start tacking things up while it's on the bike in fact if I've got a little tack on there I'll be able to bend it to the right place yeah let's do that <laughs> Well, before we tack that on, I think I'm going to grind the curve out of that because obviously we're putting a flat piece on. I think the simplest thing to do is just grind that flat because it needs to be about like so. You've got to remember you're not going to see any of this. So let's do that. I think we'll guess that. That might be better. That's better, rah. Right, I'm going to tack that on there. I think. Then try and get the angle right. It's going to be a bit all over the place to start with, but we'll get it. We'll get it about right. Oh. Try that back on the bike now and then I can bend it with uh, just that one tack on where we want it. Right. What about there with that? I think. Uh, I'll say that, I'm going to break that back off actually. It's still not sitting nice up here. I need to grind a bit more off this. I'm glad I went with that extra half inch.
We'll do that or shall I bend that round to it? Yeah. We'll see. Alright, I broke that back off to try and make that a bit better shape so we ain't got gaps to weld up. We don't want to really be welding gaps upon this thin stuff. I think that about there should have it. Should do it. I'll quickly try that on and then uh, we'll grind that into shape. Then that's got it. Just check that out. Got a couple of little tacks on the inside. Come on, behave, welder. That's it. I'm going to grind that shape into it now. That's one bit. Now I'm going to weld that all up and then we'll go for what we're doing in that void there on each side of it. Right, we have some little side pieces now. So I'll get these tacked in. And as I'm doing all this, I'm gonna keep trying it on the bike. Because we certainly don't wanna start going out of shape. Pass me the weld or somebody. <laughs> Where's that? There it is. I normally put it out of reach, then I have to let go of everything. There we go, that'll do. Let's move that so I don't cover it in spatter like I normally do. side Let's have a quick look at that. I say that uh, doing all these different shapes, different angle changes, and stuff like that will really start putting the strength into it. Well, that's looking spot on so far. So far, so good. Uh, yeah, I'm going to weld that up. I'm going to keep welding. As we build it, I'm going to weld it up properly so I'm not putting too much heat through the whole thing if I leave all the welding to the end. Yeah, it's looking all right to me. Next bit. Yeah, weld it up and then we'll start figuring out this first bit down here to go over the top shot mount. Okay, that's that uh, welded up. 
So, next. What am I gonna do next? <laughs> Who knows? That's all still fitting good anyway. Right, I've got the original hooks for the seat here. This is sort of an adjuster where you can have the seat at two heights. I'll only be using one of them. Uh, I think with them in place, I'll still be able to use them if, when I make something on the bottom of this seat base that hooks into them. That'll take care of keeping the front down and then just make something at the rear of the seat that bolts it up. So next, I'm, try, I'm trying to keep this simple as I go along. I think next I'm going to put a flat piece in that comes straight over the top of all that and just sort of curves up over the mud guard there. Yeah, I think that'll do it. And then that'll keep everything away from the shock. It'll keep the actual seat base flat. So there'll be no discomfort with anything uh, sticking up your rear end. If we make any lot, sort of shapes in there, I'm going to keep it flat, send it up there and then figure out the back and the sides. Yeah, I'll do it. Right. It actually should be quite strong, although it's really, really thin material. It should be quite strong doing it like that. I'll say, then I'll trim all the sides to where I want them. And then the side panels will actually cover all the frame. Yeah, let's cut a base out for the rest of it. Okay, found a bit of a usual rusty old material out for the actual base. Uh, luckily, I'll show you them anyway, I've cut this. Some measurements have actually turned out really good just by sheer luck. So we'll cut a straight line like this. Let's have a go at freehand, see if we can keep it straight. And then we'll uh, trim the length then. Bad. Not bad at all. Right. Now for the length. The measurement between these two points here is a exactly the same as the back of the frame here which is brilliant so yeah I'm gonna drop that under there I think bring it to here then just shape it up over that I've got that marked up So I think the easiest way, because this is too wide for my folder, I'm just going to try and sort of fold it in this a little bit. I know this is not <laughs> really its intended use, but I hope, as long as it does the job. Well, let's have a look at that. Well, it's done it though, nice and neat. Well, that's quite close. And I'm just going to trim it down now. I'll do it. I'll 
probably curve that a little bit actually. Right, chop that off. Yeah, I think I'm going to curve that end bit. That great big long line I got really straight and this short bit I got wonky. Yeah I have. <laughs> well let's trim that back shall I? I managed to go wonky on that. Any a little bit. That's it. Well, that one done absolutely nothing. That's not going straight. We'll have to fold it a bit more as well. All right, it's starting to take shape. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. I've got two little marks here because I want this to taper in a little bit at the back there to come into sort of the width for the top of the mudguard here. Then when I set this out, I've got to set it obviously with a gap all the way around the tank there to give us enough room for the material to go under for the seat cover. So I think now I'm going to cut the tapers on the top here. And then we'll start thinking how we're going to lay the sides out. I say it doesn't matter where the sides sort of land. I don't mind if they're at the top of the frame, halfway down the frame or what at this point in time. Because obviously the rest of it, the side panel will be there. So the side panel will fit nicely up against the seat and flush with the seat. Uh, yeah, let's get this taper cut and go from there. Right, I've just uh, I've cut that taper on. Uh, the sides will basically sort of go outwards. Sort of how the KTM is actually, they, they go out, they're not straight down. Uh, the profile of the seat, the top of the seat, obviously I'm, I'm probably going to tack it at these corners here so I can then keep coming back trying it on the bike because I want that leaning back a bit because we've got to leave a gap and when it's all got the sponge in and everything the profile of the seat let me try and get that right if you can see that it'll sort of be like so something along them lines So we should have plenty of padding in there, so we've got a bit of comfort. I'm not sure how I'm going to finish the shape of the side of this seat base. But however that goes, obviously we'll make them side panels to, to follow it exactly. And yeah, tack them two corners. Get that sitting so we've got a gap for the material. And go from there. 
And before I go and tack that seat base on, we'll roll the edge of this first and mark that up. Just so it hasn't got this sharp edge for the material. Although they can put like a, a rubber bead round there before the cover goes on, but we'll roll it a bit as well. Give me a bit of a guideline. That's better. All right, get the good old pliers on it. that done it's not absolutely perfect but obviously you're not going to see it it's just give it a, a bit of a rolled edge get less chance of the material ripping through the metal and obviously now that is quite strong with all these different shapes and that rolled over we've created quite a bit of strength actually right I don't think I'm going to do much more because it's, it's actually getting late and I've got other things to do this evening. So that fits quite good actually. I'll say what I'll do next, probably not now, is tack these back corners. Then I can put it back on the bike and then sort of bring it back till I've got a nice gap round here for the material to roll round. I'll say there's, there's several ways of doing this sort of work. Like I've just spent a bit of time rolling that edge on. You can weld a bit of round bar, you can put a bit of round bar and knock the edge around the round bar. There's, there's loads of ways of doing these sort of jobs, but I think do it the way you enjoy. That's the best bet. It doesn't matter what other people think how you do it. Do it the way you enjoy and the way that you're happy with. It's, it's that simple. And there we are. That is gonna come out all right, I think. Bit of messing about. I may have to do a tiny little bit of a cut out there and sort of blank it off for the top of the shot. It's actually quite close it's not it probably does look like it's touching there actually it's literally about a millimeter off it so i probably will do something it only needs to be i don't know five mil five mil high that's going to have no effect on the comfort of the seat obviously because the the sponge will be sort of up here so i may have to cut that out and not sort of box it off uh then these They'll obviously angle out. How I'm going to finish it down here, I'm not 100% sure yet. But however that is, does end up being finished, we'll follow it with the side panels. Because the side panels, I'm going to shape them out of here. So that's one of the mounting points for them. And then follow the seat line and we'll make some up as we go along. And then sort of little mini number boards that come over the, uh, the silencer a tiny bit there. But again, we'll figure all that out as we go along. I'm quite happy with that. 
And it's, it's not going to be that heavy. I know some of you probably think that's going to be really heavy. It's not. It's all out a really thin sheet. And we're creating the strength with the shape. And most old seat bases are steel. I know we've tried to shed a bit of weight on this bike, but the, the seats that came off it, obviously I've got all that ripped down, the weight of them, that were quite heavy. And I think this ain't going to be no heavier when I've done it. It's going to be a lot smaller as well, actually. You can see the old seat came right round here and down here. And it was really wide. So I think we're going to be okay. You know, plenty of padding in the important area, just here. Yeah, it's coming along. Ooh. Yeah, that'll do. There's another step forward, I think by the end of tomorrow, I should be finished this. And then it's got to go for powder coating. Well, will I be finished it? Oh, I don't know, because I've got to do all the mounting points as well. So yeah, there's still a fair bit of thinking out on there actually, on talking rubbish. So it's probably another two days on that. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes, see how the visitors go and things like that and see how much time I get on it. Uh, that's about it. I'm gonna go down and edit this video and then I'm working on more designs. I've been doing t-shirts, new t-shirt designs. <gasps> Breathe in. Breathe in so you can see it <laughs> without it bulging. <laughs> I'm sure you use a lot, lot, a lot better in them than me. I have to iron my t-shirts over a wok so I can fit in them. Yeah, I've been working on quite a few actually. I've been putting some on the Teespring, which the link for that is below all the videos. And I'm continuing to work on quite a few different designs. Not just all like with Doghouse on either. I'm just trying to do a few more interesting ones. Just again, making these up as I go along. And also I have another 50 cal on the old eBay. I've done all this one in copper look. You see that? So another 50 cal pointless key ring. <laughs> anyway, that'll do. I'm going to get cleaned up and call it a day. Cheers for watching, guys. Take care.